This is the lecture for Brink's article, Moral Realism and the Skeptical Arguments from Disagreement and Queerness. Uh, we have Brink over here in the bottom left. Uh, like with Mackie, there's really not a lot you need to know before you read this. You can just, with the help of the reading quiz and perusal, start reading. There's stuff that's easier to understand and stuff that's harder to understand in this article. One thing which you may or may not find rather hard to understand is the discussion of supervenience, which is uh, a word that came up briefly in Mackey, but which plays a larger role in Brink. And so although there is enough in Brink to sort of understand supervenience, because it's a big scary word and a little complicated, I thought I'd sort of explain it in this lecture. Also, uh, I think the best way of understanding supervenience is this sentence right here, which shows up after Brink has been talking about supervenience for about two pages. So uh, you may, it, as you're reading, you might be relatively confused if you don't already have this in mind, which I think is the easiest way to understand it. So what is supervenience? So here's the word supervenience. So, the simplest way to understand it is, like I said, this sentence. Supervenience implies that no change can occur in the supervening property without a change occurring in the base property. Uh, and we can skip the rest. So you probably think, oh, if that is the simple <laughs> description of supervenience, I am in trouble. Uh, but no, it's actually pretty straightforward. So. Uh, the best way to think about it is with examples. So think about wetness. Wetness is a property. Some things are wet. Some things have the property of wetness. Some things are not wet. And I guess it's sort of like a scalar property, so you can be more or less wet. So I am not very wet right now. Um, I guess I can get... Now I'm a little wet. That may have been a mistake. Wetness is not, we think, its own special thing. It's not like I can go out in the world and say, oh look, there is wetness. Or it's not like when I poured the water on myself, I poured water plus a bit of wetness on myself. And so I got wet, not because of the water, but because of the wetness I put on. No, wetness is not like a special separate thing. Rather, wetness is a property which is made up of other things. Uh, what exactly those are is kind of complicated, but like wetness is a property of liquids and it's a property they have because of the way their molecules behave. And also it's a property of things that are covered in liquid. So things that are covered in liquid are wet because they're covered by molecules that blah blah blah. We don't have to <laughs> explain wetness. The only thing we need to understand is that wetness is not a separate thing, rather wetness depends on liquid, or really what it depends on is the physical properties of molecules. The reason uh, this rag is not wet is because the molecules are arranged in a certain way. The reason this water, could you see the rag? I, I wasn't looking at the camera. Here's the rag, it's not wet. The reason the water in the bottle is wet and the reason that I am partially wet is because of something having to do with how water molecules work. So the complicated philosophical way of saying this is that supervenience, or sorry, wetness supervenes on the property of molecules or the properties of molecules. What does that mean? Let's go back to this. Supervenience implies that no change can occur in the supervening property without a change occurring in the base property. So in this case, the supervening property is wetness. Wetness is supervening on the molecules. And what is the base property? Well, the chemical structure of the molecules. So supervenience means no change can occur in the wetness without a change occurring in the molecules. So this rag cannot be wet unless I change its uh, molecular structure somehow. I could immerse it in water, and now because the rag is rag plus water, it would have a different structure, it would be wet, and so on. You cannot make water no longer wet 
unless you change the molecules somehow. So you freeze them, for instance, and then maybe water is no longer wet. Or you turn them into steam, and then maybe water is no longer wet. You could argue about this, like, is ice wet or something? Um, but I think, I don't know. I don't think so. The example is just to illustrate. So the thought is properties which supervene are things that can't change unless the thing they supervene on changes. So you can't change whether something's wet without changing its molecular structure. And lots and lots of properties are supervenient properties. So wetness is not the only thing that supervenes on something else. So for instance, uh, tallness. Can something be tall? Just is like, is tallness a property you can point to on its own? Like, oh, there's some tallness in the world. No, tallness supervenes on other things. Namely, it's, I guess it's also molecular stuff. So the more molecules you have stacked on top of each other, the more it's, the more tall it gets. So I can't change tallness without changing something physical about the thing, either how much stuff it has or maybe how that stuff is arranged. So I can make myself taller only by making some physical change, you know, adjusting how my body is structured. So tallness supervenes. A lot of people think color supervenes, so you can't change something's color unless you change some property of it. It's a little complicated because what if you shine a different light on it? Maybe that changes its color. But you know, a lot of people think, no, look, uh, this is red, and the only way to make it not red anymore is to change something about it. Something about it's the, again, it's the molecules. Notice I keep using molecules as the example. This is because Mackey is assuming that materialism is true. Everything is made of molecules, according to Mackey. And Brink is happy to accept that, so Brink is happy to accept that everything is made of molecules. And, I don't know, maybe you should be happy to accept it too. Whether or not you're happy to accept it doesn't really matter. Just to understand what Brink and Mackey are talking about, if materialism is true and everything is made of molecules, all properties ultimately supervene on material or physical base properties. So look, you can't change anything about the world unless you change its material structure, if materialism is true. I can't change how wet something is. I can't change how expensive something is. I can't change how delicious something is. I can't change how uh, flammable something is unless I change the molecules somehow. And so the thought is everything supervenes on molecular structure, or it doesn't even, you know, maybe it's not molecules, maybe it's quarks, maybe it's uh, vibrating strings. Just pick your favorite theory of physics, F pick your favorite theory of material. So that's just what supervenience is. Supervenience is when you have one property which sort of sits on top of something else, and you can't change the property without changing the something else, the base property. And, uh, great. <laughs> Now you know. And so this is important, of course, for ethics. We're reading about it in an ethics course. But this is an interesting uh, uh, metaphysical question, too. So if you're interested in the metaphysics of supervenience, there's quite a few uh, citations that you can follow up. Bye.